Adiwadi. This is our unglamorous lunch spot of the day. We are actually in the underground car park of the Mercadona supermarket in a little town called Mar Mar Marchena? Marchena? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, because this is a stopover on our drive from Sevilla to Granada. Adi wardi. Um, and we wanted to stop here because Jackson loves a particular type of shoes, lums, because he has very wide feet and those are, as far as we know, the only shoes that actually fit him very comfortable. And somehow they sell them here in this town. So we did a quick stopover. He is into the city to quickly get those shoes. And then Ardi and I, we went into the supermarket to get some lunch things. And um, the reason why we chose an, the underground car park is obviously it feels a little bit more secure, but also because we have Maxi in the front. So yeah, we just didn't want to risk him overheating in the car. Um, and we actually suspect a little bit of problems with the accommodation in Granada because a lot of things aren't matching up. We made a booking through booking.com and then and then I got an email from this Dutch company, Belle Villa. They are the ones we booked with, so they put all their accommodation up for rent on booking.com. And then, um, so we were like, okay, but in the PDF, and the reason we chose that place was because it's one of the few places it seems to be in the city center that says they have free parking. And all the car parks in Granada are incredibly expensive. So, the, okay, let's go with that one. Then in the PDF that I got from that Belle Villa, the Dutch company, it actually didn't mention anything about a, um, about a car park. So we were like, mm, what's going on here? We checked the booking.com website again. And all of a sudden we realized like, oh shit, there are actually no reviews of this place. Actually, no, that's not true. It was one review of that place. So I'm just gonna give Adi a little bit more of his cat food smelling puree. And that one review was for January this year saying that the place they booked actually didn't exist and that they were put up in some other apartment and that the person who helped them was actually really rude and aggressive. So after that we didn't see any free car park on the PDF and then this one review we were like some red flags started going off um so then i'm trying to contact so i have a contact address here in spain of a guy who only speaks spanish i'm trying to email him but he, or he doesn't re or he replies like very late and then the way he replies is it's barely understandable what he's saying so and then we asked for the address where to meet and he said oh we're meeting at the apartment address this is the address and we're like that's completely the other side of town of where we booked so like what is going on um texted him that back then he said okay no no i'm sorry i'm wrong we are meeting there um but still no mention of the car park although i've been asking about it he's just being so vague about it then the street parking then there's this parking we're like what is going on here I'm trying to call this dutch company got through to them they confirmed that we actually are staying in the apartment that we booked but like it's so we'll see when we arrive there but they also cannot contact the guy um so we don't really know yet what is going on with the parking so yeah i've checked my email 20 times already today still no reply from the guy so yeah let's see what happens when we arrive in granada we are definitely bracing ourselves for some drama there so we'll see when we arrive there but they also cannot contact the guy um so we don't really know yet what is going on with the parking so yeah i've checked my email 20 times already today still no reply from the guy so yeah let's see what happens when we arrive in granada we are definitely bracing ourselves for some drama there Okay, so little travel update. We are now 90 kilometers away from Granada and we had uh, my mom's best friend, Mercedes, who's actually almost like an auntie to me. But she contacted the Spanish contact person that we had for the Shouty. apparently. Hmm? The Shouty guy. 
the shouty guy? Oh yeah, yeah. So the guy, yeah, yeah. Jackson saying the shouty guy, the guy that I said before that in the one review that we did read, read was very aggressive. So we have we had her call the Spanish context. So the shouty guy, actually his name is Antonio. Um, and turns out that on the phone at least he's super super friendly. He was very helpful, and he gave the address of where we're supposed to go, what we have to put into the GPS. Um, where the car park is, how much we have to pay for the car park through this app, but uh, yeah, things are looking up and our red flags are slowly going away, but we'll see, we'll def like we'll see when we get there what's actually the deal. We still have some concerns left. So we made it to Granada, where we've been staying for the next four nights. Um, it's around five in the afternoon now, just having a little stroll, have some fresh air, we're gonna go for a drink. And then um, tomorrow we're gonna go visit the Alhambra. Good morning. So it is just after eight o'clock and we rushed out the door to, um, to make it in time for the Alhambra because we... Um, our visit is at 8.30 and you need to be on time or otherwise they don't let you in anymore. Um, yeah, it's quite a rush rush because Jack had to run back all the way to the car to get our IDs. Um, yeah, we, we decided not to take the stroller today exactly because of this because we have to climb a lot of stairs and he also doesn't like to sit in it long enough to make it worth it. So, wow, look at that. Oh, and there it is! The Alhambra. Wow, look at that! So just randomly going in. I'm not sure if this is the actual entrance, but because we have tickets, this should be the start of our visit. Currently waiting for another three minutes until we're allowed into the Nasri Palace, or Nasri Palaces, I think it is, um, which is supposed to be like the core, the most important buildings of the whole Alhambra. Um, we booked that first so actually when you go onto the website of the Alhambra there's several tickets that you can buy and we took the general admission ticket and um, which give you access to the Nazri palaces the Al Kazaba which is a military fortress and then the gardens um, so yeah and the only one that you need to be on time for is the Nazri palace so you actually book a time slot and then you need to be on time so we are now ready to queue up So we told them that we're uh, producers for the second season of Game of Thrones, the new, season, new series. <laughs> so they let us in by ourselves. Two friends and I. We've got the same place to ourselves. Artie's gonna play a Targaryen. <laughs> so just a little side note on the tickets. They say on normal times you need to book your ticket between 75 days and 90 days in advance. But um, yeah, now during COVID, there were still heaps of tickets left when I even checked last night, although we booked our ticket last week. Um, and we had this place almost all to ourselves. Yeah, The Alhambra is a palace and fortress complex that was originally constructed as a small fortress in 889 CE on the remains of ancient Roman fortifications and then largely ignored until its ruins were rediscovered and renovated in the mid-13th century by Nazrit Alamar of the Emirate of Granada. It was converted into a royal palace in 1333 by the Sultan of Granada. Here you see the Court of Myrtles with the Arabic pole that was used to keep the palace cool. 
It was also a symbol of power because water was in short supply and the technology used to keep the school full was expensive and difficult. This is not a bedroom. Here it was in the keys of the Humble were handed over to Christians in 1492. Alhambra's last flowering period was during the decline of the Nazrid dynasty, who were increasingly subjected to the Christian kings of Castile. After being allowed to fall in despair for centuries while the buildings were occupied by squatters, the Alhambra was rediscovered following the defeat of Napoleon, who had conducted retaliatory destruction of the site. It is now one of Spain's main tourist attractions and a UNESCO heritage site. This is the Court of Lions, which is surrounded by a gallery supported by 124 marble columns. In the middle is the alabaster fountain with 12 lions to symbolize strength and power. I'm already developing the famous mall back, which a friend of mine once explained to me is if you go with your girlfriend to the mall, <laughs> your back gets really sore very quickly. <laughs> And I think biophysically that basically means you're not walking at a normal speed. <laughs> so everywhere you see me, wherever I go on tour, anywhere in the world, I'm always looking at interesting things like this. <laughs> well, even the more classic one. <laughs> That's my favorite position. Taj Mahal. I think come on. It's an awesome scene. I can't even oh. hold the camera straight because it makes me laugh so much. Oh my god. Which one is that? For all those more backers out there, this is the IT band stretch. <laughs> really get that outside. Get your ass out. <laughs> but it's very important to always focus on something that you're looking at. <laughs> so I'm looking at this firework. <laughs> and up here. That's quite interesting up there. Oh! Very nice. Other side. One more, two more. Yo, oh, and almost it. Oh god. Oh. Sierra Nevada in the back there where you can go skiing as well. Just 
We are now in the Palacio de Generalif, which is the most important outlying building of the Alhambra. It was the summer palace and country estate of the Nazrit rulers of the Emirate of Granada. Hey, so I just wanted to give a few tips about traveling the, about visiting the Alhambra with children. If you book tickets in advance, make sure you book their ticket in advance as well. Although it's free, you, they do need to actually hold the ticket. If not, you might have to go all the way back to the front entrance to get their ticket. So yeah, tip number one. And then tip number two, do not bring the stroller. Um, first of all, in the Nazari palaces, it's not um, even allowed. And in the rest of the domain, it's really not worth it. There's lots of steps, there's lots of cobblestones everywhere. So it's just, just don't do it. Um, Second of all, what you, um, third of all, what you need to think about is that the Alhambra visit will easily take you about three, four hours. So um, yeah, make sure you time that well then when they have to have the naps. Or The way we did it is we made sure we visited the Nazari palaces at 8.30 because already most of the time goes down for his nap around 9 and he will do that first nap in the carrier. And then last tip is, it's not easy to get food around here, so do bring a picnic as well. Um, there's no nice grass fields where you can sit in, but there are plenty of bunches where you can have a good lunch. So Ardy seems to be fascinated by everything that has water in it or running water. So good to know as well that all throughout the Alhambra they have plenty of water bo um, they have plenty of water fountains where you can fill up your bottles so um, you do not need to carry liters and liters of water so uh, so it's now 10 to 12 which means it took us about three and a half hours to visit the whole Alhambra um, the most of our time we definitely spent in the Nazari palaces I mean probably one of the most exquisite pieces of architecture that still exists in the world today um, and then we visited the Al Kazaba as well, which is a military fortress, which is amazing, amazing views from there. We definitely rushed a little bit through there because we could see that Ardi was getting a bit impatient. And then we visited the gardens as well, which also, and general leaf. So um, yeah, I think three and a half hours is probably the right amount of time that you need to uh, preview to visit the whole Alhambra. No. <laughs> Good morning everybody, it's now um, Saturday, we visited the Alhambra yesterday and we decided to have a bit of a relaxed morning because it's been a bit of a few full-on days. Um, I'm drinking coffee out of a wine glass because in the Airbnb that we're staying at right now there's just no coffee cup, so uh, fancy coffee it is at the moment. Hey Maxi, you exploring outside? So yeah, the view, the apartment itself is not so interesting for Maxi to explore, but the view out here is quite nice for him. And then we have Jackson doing the laundry. Well, actually, we have Jackson and Ardi doing the laundry and watching the Icelandic Eurovision Song Festival contestants. So how do you say that? Yeah. Favorites. Not my favorites, it's Ardi's favorites. Yeah, it's Ardi's favorites. This is actually one of Ardi's favorite songs. The first dance you'll ever learn will be this yeah. one. <laughs> Can't show too much of copyright issues. Okay, okay, so it's 10.30. Um, Ardi had a snap. Um, in the shower, wash my hair. Um, I have the backpack with me, yeah. Keys are in the pocket. I'm checking, um, Maxi's inside. Windows are closed. Yeah. Let's go and let's explore Granada today. So our plan for tonight, for today, is to um, walk around a little bit, probably get some lunch or something somewhere, and then explore the quarter of Albas Al hey. of Albasin, which is on the opposite mountain as the Alhambra, and it's supposed to be the Muslim quarters, right? Or the old Muslim quarters, at least. So. Um, Ruchiku! 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 Yeah, 
is the Alhambra. We're now on the hill of Sacramento. An amazing view is here. And Sacramento used to be the old Jewish quarters um, under the, I think it was the Muslim rule. And now it's actually the main, um, how do you call it when the lo where the locals live? Like urban living? Mm -hmm. And now it's actually the main residential area of um, Granada, of downtown Granada. So this used to be a house, you think? Everything must have been housing, because why would you build into a big out of cave, and this is already a cave, and you could just build a house mm -hmm. here, and it's easier. You can see it here. Yeah, so as you can see, this ha the house, the front of the door there, is really close to the hillside. So the houses here are just traditional and they see in houses that are built into the hill. He's actually sucking of it like when he, he drinks milk. <laughs> he might be a bit hungry actually. Oh, we could stop here in this beautiful square. So it's Monday morning, we just paid for free parking and um, <laughs> we arrived back to the apartment to go get all our luggage and then we're leaving Granada and going on a four hour drive to the Alicante region. So we are just about to leave and packed in but let me do a quick a tour of our stinky let me do a quick tour of our horrible apartment. So this is the kitchen. We have the living room area, table, windows looking over the cute little square. And then we have the bedroom in here, closet, a balcony that really shows over nothing. And then we have the bathroom over here. So pros about so the pros about this place is, well, it has a kitchen. Um, the location is 10 out of 10. Then the shower pressure is good. Wi-Fi is good. But then fridge doesn't close properly. AC doesn't work. Um, everything is almost damaged. Um, what else? What laundry machine doesn't work. We didn't have free parking, although on booking.com it said we would have free parking. And then worst of all is the horrible, horrible smoking smell. Like it just, it's like we're living in an ashtray for four days. Everything smells like smoke. Uh, Maxi's fur smelled like smoke. Ardy, all his clothes smelled like smoke. Like it just honestly felt awful, awful, awful. So um, yeah, let's just say we would not recommend this place at all. Also, it said it's 60 square meters, but actually it's closer to like 40 square meters, which with two people, a baby and a cat, that actually makes quite a bit of difference. So, um, you can see Maxi is watching the neighbor over there and he's uh, having a long phone call. So we are uh, 
it's not that much after nine and we um we fully loaded bob and we are very excited to get out of the smoking dungeon or or ashtray look at the title spaces is he gonna make it too Ooh, look at that! 